Welcome to today's broadcast of North Idaho College Public Forum. The crew is comprised of NIC television students and your moderator is North Idaho College political scientist Tony Stewart. Today we wish to discuss the topic of higher education with emphasis on community colleges. We have a second uh, purpose in our program today too as we discuss this important subject. Uh, Steve Schink, who is the Director of Public Information at North Idaho College, would join me in paying tribute to our interim uh, president at North Idaho College, who, as of the taping of the show, will have ended that term with us. So we want to honor him and also ask him some questions about higher education. Our guest is Dr. Walter Bro, who holds an A.B. in education from the University of Michigan. He also has a master's in education and a doctor of education, both from Wayne State University in Detroit. He was involved with the Detroit Public Schools for 17 years, five years as a teacher in elementary field, I was assistant and principal for five years, and worked as a principal in the inner city for seven years. Also, uh, Dr. Bro moved on to higher education at, with Lake Michigan College, where he served as dean of students uh, starting in 1967. He became executive vice president in 1969 and became president of that institution in 1978 and served until his retirement in 1985. As North Idaho College was going through a transition and our president for 18 years uh, resigned, uh, Dr. Walter Bro came in, first of all, to serve as the uh, acting dean of instruction and has recently been, as I indicated, interim president of our college. Uh, Dr. Bro, welcome to our program. It's a pleasure to have you here and uh, we look forward to asking the questions. Well, I, I'm just delighted to be here and I just found out now that this is an honor to me and I'm even more <laughs> delighted to be here. Um, can we skip the questions? <laughs> yes. Uh, and I know Steve will have some opening comments when he has the first question, but I do want to take this opportunity, Dr. Bro, on behalf of uh, Steve Schink and our staff, and I'm sure I speak for the faculty and students at North Idaho College to say that uh, we want to do this program as you end your uh, time with us. It's been an extremely positive and productive time, and one thing we've learned about you while you have been at North Idaho College is that you have had an open door policy. and. Uh, you welcome the students, the faculty, and the staff uh, uh, into the process of what you were doing, and uh, we want to thank you for taking time out from retirement to do this and to help North, North Idaho College in this transition period. Uh, and personally, I'd like to say that it's been a pleasure uh, to work with you and to uh, look at how you've dealt with the programs at our institution. I think I'm supposed to blush at this time, and I, uh, I have enough makeup on. I don't think I will, but uh, seriously, what a lot of people think I'm responsible for all these good things that have been happening in the last few months, but I, I look at it as uh, coming into a situation where everyone was just ready to, uh, to move forward, and uh, if that hadn't happened, if there hadn't been a willingness for everyone to get on the same team and work together, I couldn't have done the job, and that's what made it so easy for me and why I loved it at uh, and still do at North Idaho College. I love this community and the, the beautiful scenery. All the people are so warm and friendly. Uh, quite frankly, I don't look forward to going back. <laughs> I want to hug and kiss my grandkids, but uh, I'm going to miss the good friends I've made around here like you and Steve and dozens and dozens of other people. Well, you certainly have set that tone, and I don't want to forget this at the end of the show, so I'll set now, and I know Steve will have some comments, but uh, you have made so many friends that I hope you and your wife uh, we'll find time uh, uh, in the years ahead to come back and visit us because there are a lot of people who would want you to do that. Thank you. Steve Schink. Uh, well, Tony, I, I'll, uh, I'll echo most of your remarks and, uh, and also add that those people who, uh, who think that Dr. Bro is largely responsible for many of the good things that happened here over the last five months or so are absolutely right. Uh, uh, the, the setting, I, I will agree with him, uh, was, was right for his kind of leadership, but it was his leadership that I think uh, brought us so far forward in such a short period of time, and I would join you in, in thanking him for everything he's done here. And I would invite you to commence the question. The first question, uh, it has been a short time, but it seems like a long time ago, too, in some ways. Uh, think back, if you would, to July when you arrived. Uh, what did you see as your primary responsibility coming here uh, for this transition period? Actually, there were two things that I was to do, and uh, one was to have a smooth transition for the fall semester. We wanted to be sure everything was under control and working well when the fall semester start, started. And of course, I came here in, in July. And <clears throat> the second one was to, 
to provide a smooth transition between uh, Barry Schuler, the outgoing president, and the new president, and realizing that the ACCT, the Association of Community College Trustees, were involved in the search process and getting a new president, my job what then was to, to do everything I could to make it possible to have our new president, who will come on board co coincidentally by uh, on January 12, uh, Dr. <coughs> Robert Bennett, um, to do everything possible to make sure he was able to start right off and you know running full speed so he could do all those good things that are going to happen here in the next several years. Some of the people uh, watching the show may not realize it, but of course ACCT, the Association of Community College Trustees, um, played a larger role in the, in the presidential search process. They, they served as consultants for North Idaho College in that search. Uh, they also provided us with your services, uh, you know, for which we owe them a debt of gratitude. How is it that you and ACCT got together? Oh, that's quite interesting. Um, I don't think we have enough time on this program. I've been a, a member with my college with a, for, uh, we've joined in the ACCT many years ago, and I've been a member of that group for a long time. And when I was about to retire from Lake Michigan College in 1985, I um, talked with the executive director and said, I understand you're doing some interim things and it might be fun in retirement sometime along the way. If you have any openings, uh, I'd like to go in and take over some presidency or something that, uh, where you need someone for a short period of time. And he said, well, we, we do that from time to time. They're, they're only, uh, they've only been into this for the last, oh, five or 10 years, I guess. And right now they have five or six people like myself who are serving in interim capacities across the country. And so as a result, um, after I retired, I'd been called at least uh, for two other, two other interim positions, and at the time I was doing something else and couldn't do it. But when I came, when, I, when this one became available, then I uh, thought it was a nice place. I came out and talked with the Board of Trustees and loved the area, and they thought I might be able to help. And so we made an agreement, and I'm still here, and will be until probably close to the beginning of February and it's been a tremendous experience for me, a very rewarding one. And in some ways, I guess it's, it's worked out because I'm not going to be here long enough to get anyone very angry with me. <laughs> Dr. Bro, I, I want to take advantage of your expertise that I've certainly given the viewers with the introduction. You've had just a tremendous uh, experience in all fields of education. Uh, the community college uh, has grown by leaps and bounds since the 1960s. My understanding that since the early 60s, uh, is when you've had so many created throughout uh, the country and we've moved from the old concept of the junior college into the community college concept and we have viewers who have had no exposure to community college and we have uh, students sitting there with parents who are deciding whether they want to start a community college or a, a four-year institution or university. Would you take a minute to give us uh, a description of what is the really the charge given to community colleges by states uh, or their responsibility and how they serve the society? Well, you're completely right that there's, there's been a change in the, the old concept of the junior college, which had only one function. It was to provide the first two years of education for those students who would be going on transferring to a four-year college or university. And about the turn of the century, roughly 1900 in Joliet, Illinois, the first community college took effect. It was called a junior college. Uh, for many years, that function remained the same. And uh, again, in about the 1960s, they just blossomed. And the, the function became much greater than that. Uh, not only do we still have to do the transfer function and provide the best quality education we can for those people for the first two years, we have to provide great training for the ones who want to become brain surgeons and lawyers. And uh, when they go to the our, our record, by the way, is really good in community colleges. They, our graduates are very successful in the four-year colleges and universities. So they, they go on and we have to provide great education for them there. But we also have to take the D student in high school. We have to take the, the, the housewife whose children have grown up and she wants to come either maybe take a history course because she liked history. Uh, maybe she wants to take some community service type courses, something in recreation or leisure time. We have another whole area of responsibility in occupational studies. Uh, 
the vocational technical area and here we we not only provide training where people can young men and women can go out and get a job a uh, hands-on kind of a job in a year or two of education but we also are doing uh, many things not only at North Idaho College but in all the community colleges in the country to provide training retraining job upgrading for businesses and industries and I, I have a personal philosophy that what we should be doing here and we've told people so far since I've been here and I'm sure your new president will uh, that we want to go out to those businesses and industries and say how can we help you we're not the experts who are going to tell you what you need you tell us what you need and we'll will help you accomplish that, such as the, the, the thing that North Idaho College did for the Coeur d'Alene Resort on the lake uh, when it was ready to open. All the training for all those new employees was done as a cooperative effort between our vocational uh, department and the others. So we have such a, a much broader spectrum of uh, than just the transfer function, which is important, but we do many, many other things as well. May I ask one other question in that area? You've done an excellent job of explaining the uh, the comprehensiveness of the college. But is it also correct that at many community colleges, it's not just unique to North Idaho College, that uh, you provide what I would call in the Renaissance uh, phase, uh, entertainment, uh, the arts, and uh, also uh, ideas of lectures and sports, so forth, uh, and special interest courses for individuals who are not pursuing a degree but uh, would like to share in the the liberal arts approach to life. Uh, you're exactly right and uh, North Idaho College is an excellent example of all the other kinds of things that that we're doing in, in relation to the cultures. You have the the show, the art show that I walked into the first week I was on campus and uh, a really a nice kind of a, I can't remember the name of the art show. Art but on I, the Green. Art on the Green and this is a real excellent kind of thing. You've, you're doing many community uh, um, functions with your musical programs and not only in, in the auditorium here but also our musical groups are out performing in the community at various functions on a pretty much a regular basis that helps the exposure for North Idaho College. So you're right, there are many more things than the ones I had mentioned that it, it's a comprehensive scope, and that's the true name of community colleges now. Many talk about in their in their catalogs a comprehensive community college. Steve Shink. It seems to me, Dr. Bro, that the, that uh, education in general is becoming a more competitive process. Uh, certainly, the uh, hunt is on for students as uh, as public and private institutions uh, both need to find ways to. Uh, present their services to more people. Do you see a growing role for community colleges in the in the coming years? Oh, definitely. In um, I'll I'll just cite the statistics in Michigan, where I I know more about Michigan, uh, obviously, than here because I was there for pretty much 36 years of my my career. But we had 29 community colleges in Michigan, and uh, they all were in the same kind of a role, and. During the period between 1971, I think, and 81, the four-year colleges and community college, uh, four-year colleges and universities grew something like eight percent, and uh, the community colleges grew 88 percent. Now that that shows you the kinds of growth we've had in the state of Idaho. I think that North Idaho College, even though we just had a four percent increase in enrollment this last year, most other institutions in the state had much less. They either were holding their own or declining enrollments. And I believe the reason for that, uh, the success of community colleges, generally two. One, most of them are close to home. Uh, I know we're in Idaho and you, know, you only have two community colleges in Idaho, but in, in Michigan we had 95 percent of the population of Michigan was within 40 miles of a community college. Your state has six what they call junior college districts, and I, I met with some legislative committees in the last several months, four or five times, and I think I've pretty well done my best to brainwash them to say community college instead of junior colleges. But you already have six junior college districts, which I hope they will now name community college districts, and eventually that you'll have 
six community colleges. So one of the main reasons for their success are that <coughs> they're close to home generally. The second one is that they're reasonable uh, cost. There's a reasonable cost compared to many four-year colleges and universities. So those two are really important. Also what's happened in our end of the world, uh, out east in Michigan, uh, we found that community colleges have generally um, gained in prestige. When they first started in the 60s, a lot of people thought they were super high schools, uh, high schools with ashtrays, and you'd only send your uh, children there as students when they got done with high school if you couldn't get them in, quotes, a good four-year college or university. That's changed. Now we find that many people who are in the middle and on up in as far all the way to the top of the spectrum income-wise are seeing that there's good quality education in community colleges. Our teachers are expert teachers. They would call them master teachers because most institutions require master's degrees, but they really are master teachers in that they don't have to do a lot of research. They have small classes. They can, they can learn the names of their students. Uh, they could call them by name in the halls. They're concerned. And so there's an excellence in education with a personal touch. And a lot of four-year places with classes three or four hundred in a lecture session, you just don't get that. So I think that's a, a, another thing that's happening. We're getting a good reputation, and so no one has to be afraid to send their children, their students, to us uh, for the first two years or whatever they want to do, because whether it's a community services type course, leisure time course, vocational course, or academic, in every case we're trying to provide the top quality, and uh, I think we're doing a fine job of that. I just returned from a, a national conference on resource development, and one of the one of the uh, really prevalent topics there was the role that community colleges uh, throughout the nation, and uh, and uh, specifically in some states like Iowa, are beginning to play uh, in economic development, and as uh, as a major resource in their own right uh, to uh, business. Uh, do you see North Idaho College moving in that direction more in the future? It has to. It really has to. I'm thinking of, uh, again, in Michigan, we've had the 29 community colleges during uh, about 1980 or 81. Michigan's economy was quite depressed, perhaps the way Idaho's economy is now. And we thought, as community colleges, we ought to not be part of the problem, but part of the solution. And so we, we did a lot of lobbying. We did a lot of talking with the, the legislators and uh, businesses and industries and said, hey, let us help do something about this. And we got together and we were able to do many, many concrete things in, in as I said before, training, retraining, <coughs> job upgrading. And what happened, there were a lot of people in Michigan who believed that the economy really got better because of the good work, thousands and thousands and thousands of people who, who were now doing uh, productive things and weren't before. I think Idaho is going to have to do that because <coughs> I had read someplace as soon as I, uh, within the first week or two after I came to Idaho, that your uh, per capita expenditures or something were 48 out of 50 states or quite, quite low. And what happens is the executives in businesses and industry will not relocate and come out to any community, not just Idaho, if they don't feel that their kids can go to a good school system and they don't feel that uh, people are providing enough. I think you're very fortunate. I've talked to Warren Bates and heard him several times and I, I think that the people of Idaho are getting a bargain in their education because they're getting quality, they're doing well in scores, but they're really spending much less than most other places. And I think in order to attract more businesses and industries out here, you're going to have to spend more on education and make sure that they're, when they move here, that they have a place to go and that they're sure their, their young people are going to uh, be successful. And it's, they just won't come unless we have done something about education. 
I just want to say one word before I get to the next question. A number of students call back every year after they leave North Idaho College and, and from the institutions that they're at or universities, and they echo your comments that their two years at North Idaho College was one of the great decisions they made in their life. Uh, we have a number of students at uh, such institutions as University of Washington. We've had students at the University of Chicago and the Eagleton Institute at uh, Rutgers and the Hubert Humphrey Institute at the uh, University of Minnesota and so forth. And they're saying that the groundwork was so well laid for them and there was an excellent faculty-student ratio. Uh, I want to take advantage of uh, your time with us too because you can make this comment and no one can charge you with having <laughs> s special interest involved uh, as you're leaving us and going back to Michigan. Now that you've had this opportunity to view higher education Idaho, uh, both for your institution and, and at our institution as you've worked these months, uh, you've indicated already that you'd like to see the statute change to indicate these are community college districts rather than junior college. I would like to ask you to give us some advice as you leave us on what else we need to do in Idaho other than funding that you've mentioned too, uh, in structure and in, in um, state support uh, in the form of legislation, whatever, that we're not now doing. Well, I'm not sure how you do this. The uh, Legislative Council Committee on Junior Colleges, an interim committee, has been meeting for the last four months, and I've attended all of these, as has Jerry Meyerhofer, the president of the College of Southern Idaho. And we tried very hard to get that group to um, recognize that the community colleges have we're, we're funded by the state now at about 39 percent. And it used to be just back, I think, in 1976 at the rate of 50 percent. So as Idaho's e economy went down, or for whatever reasons, I'm not sure, the proportion of funding coming from the state went down. And we both, um, Jerry Meyerhofer and I, felt that Within the next three years, it would be good if uh, the legislature could think about putting us back up. Might not be able to get all up there all at one time, but even some kind of a program. So I, I <coughs> somehow, I, I don't have the magic uh, formula how to do this, but I do know that with the la last election, that it seems like you've had uh, more and more people, uh, people who won and the people who ran for election both, who were supportive of education and want to find ways to, to support education. They've talked about the possibility of a statewide property tax. Nobody likes more taxes. On the other hand, uh, I think if you convince people that you need taxes, there may be a possibility to have, uh, have that happen. But, but that may not be the only way. Certainly, we do not want to increase tuition and put that burden on the students because I just said a little while ago, one of the great strengths of community colleges is to have a reasonable cost. If, if we're going to have to increase our tuition, put that on the students, then uh, they may just as well opt to go someplace else uh, if the four-year colleges and universities are the same cost as we might be. So I think we want to keep that low if we can. And so those are, you know, generally, I forgot the rest of your question, but that's yep. a start. The basic thing is, and you certainly have addressed that, and that is what else do we need to do in Idaho that we have not done uh, to be helpful to our community colleges? I think the issue of local control is important. That uh, Legislative Council Committee I mentioned was studying not only the funding but also the governance of the institution. Community college uh, needs the local control because it's called community college for that reason. It serves that local community. It should be supported primarily uh, by that um, local community and tuition, but as I say, 50% uh, should be coming from the state. And I, I just feel so strongly that the community has to have control by electing its um, board of trustees. There have been many proposals, including during the last four months, of having different systems of governance, having a chancellor system, having a kind of a system I have in Utah where there's a, a state, I'm not sure the name, but a state board of regents who selects the presidents and then a local board who, that does all the kinds of things that our board would do. But the, if you're really going to be successful in the community college movement, you have to have that local control. It has to be right here. Some other people say, well, if we're going to give you all this money, 39% or 50% of the, from the state, 
then we want to control that. And we're saying in the community colleges, you already have plenty of control. We have to submit our budgets through the state board and you know through the uh, legislative arena, and you have many controls built in already. In addition, we're we're working hard, uh, not only between the two community colleges with um, cooperative efforts, but also with the four-year colleges and universities that we the public institutions, and the the K-12 systems. It's important for Idaho to develop a total, uh, an improved total education, uh, educational system. And that means we're not just own, you know, we're just not only interested in, in uh, North Idaho College, but we want the whole state to improve. And we can help the local systems. We met with Warren Bates uh, a week or two ago and have had many of our members meet with him. We've met with these, uh, we've seen the four-year presidents and so <clears throat> what we're trying to do is get a system where we're all cooperating, not all competing to take a limited number of dollars. The pie that's there, I think, has to be increased in size. We don't want to fight with each other over the small pie that's there. What we want to do is have another pie so we can do the job. And again, I think we're quite responsible in our community colleges in um, being accountable to, pub to the public. We can. I think prove that we probably get the maximum mileage out of our dollars that the taxpayers give us. We're very careful with those funds and stretch them and doing the best we can. For a state as small as we are in population, we have several four-year institutions and I know that pie is small, but as you've indicated, we only have two community colleges for this very large geographical state. Do you see in the near future any opportunity to create maybe a third community college? Uh, uh, to represent that area that's so far from the two community colleges? Well, <clears throat> first of all, you, you, although you only have two true community colleges, North Idaho College and the College of Southern Idaho, you also have uh, six vocational technical areas, one in each of our institutions and four others scattered around the state. And um, you have some other institutions like Boise State that are doing some of the community college functions and of course you have some private institutions like Ricks and some other ones who, who do some of that as well. But I really think you're going to uh, eventually have, if I wanted to stake my life on, a, on a, a bet long term, within 20 years you're going to have at least one, two, three, or four more community colleges. Once you can figure out a way, a funding device, uh, to serve the needs of the state, you're going to need eventually six community colleges I'm so sorry to interrupt. We're out of time. And Dr. Bro, on behalf of Steve and our staff, thank you so much. It's been a pleasure having you here. Ladies and gentlemen, our guest has been Dr. Walter Bro, who has just concluded an interim presidency at North Idaho College talking about higher education. Again, I want to say on behalf of all of us, it's been a very special privilege having him here at our college, and he's done a very, very fine job uh, in moving us through the transition. Uh, please have a good week. I am Tony Stewart. Idaho College Public Forum can be seen at the same time each week over this station. This production was videotaped earlier by an NIC student crew for viewing at this more appropriate time.